Hello everyone, welcome to the video series on EFT automation. Uh, in this video, we will uh, look at object spy. Uh, we, we have been, you know, using the term object spy many times throughout the other videos. So in this, we'll dive into the object uh, a spy tool and see how we can uh, use this, uh, you know, uh, to kind of learn about these applications, I mean, say more about the objects within the applications. Let, let me go ahead and start the Object Spy. It's under Tools, and you can get to from here, Object, uh, you know, from Tools, you have Object Spy. Uh, you can also go to Resources and Object Repository, and there you have an icon here which says, you know, Object Spy, click on it, same thing, you know. It doesn't matter which way, you know, you go to get to your Object Spy, you know, it doesn't matter, it's it's one and the same. So let me go ahead and open. So as the uh, name says, <coughs> you know, Object Spy, you know, what Spy does, you know, in real life, you know, they, they spy on, you know, people spy on organizations you know spies you know they they try to find what information and here it says object spy so this will find or collect or grab the information of an object i mean as we you know as we already know you know within an application you know the text box image button drop downs these are all objects even the whole form itself is an object. You know, you take a browser, the whole browser is an object. A page is an object. A text box is an object within the browser. You know, when you go to your online banking, your uh, <clears throat> login text box and password text box, they are objects. So this tool, Object Spy, will help you <clears throat> grab the information so that you can understand the object better. I mean, this comes real handy when you get into descriptive programming, and so you know, and also when you when you uh, run into a situation where your recording process, for whatever reason, does not recognize an object, probably you can come here and see you know what's happening and why it is not identifying the object, and this could lead you. To, you know some other information which you could use to enter the object so let, let's dive in and see how this works <clears throat> so in the very first uh, button here at the top you know with a, with a little hand icon there on right on the you know button when you click on that what happens is it will minimize the UFT screen and you have this object spy window still open and your cursor turns into like a hand icon you see that there right now you can go and you can move the mouse you know onto your desktop onto applications on the specific objects and you can see that the object spy is displaying certain you know certain information of that object say for example if i move the mouse and place it right on that okay button Look at what happens to the object spy screen. At the top, it it shows that it is a win button. We know that based on our you know prior experience with this application. And you see um, uh, under properties you have native and you have identification. We'll talk about the difference later here after a couple, few minutes. But uh, look at it. I mean, it's it's primarily you know grabbing the properties of that button and if i move to uh, this password text box and all i did will highly you know hovered over that object now you can see that attached to text is password colon and we know that when we record you know when we recorded you know the prior scripts you know by logging in we know that that's the object name the password colon now I you know put it on that image it's static 
and it grabs some you know properties there so primarily that's what it does i mean not just this uh windows you can also take it to a browser you know right behind here i have a chase.com website so look at here I'm, I'm putting my mouse right on top of products and services and on uh, within the object spy you see browser page and link say for example uh, if i uh, you know what let me move this um let me click there move this now let me do it one more time click on this user id text box there so when you click on you know not just web page even on the windows form anywhere you click on an object what it does is it captures all the information for you so that you can review the information and understand it better so this particular use case uh, sorry i mean to say the object you have the browser page and then it says a web edit user underscore name so that's the name of the object and there are other things that it actually you know grabs uh, from that particular or for that particular object but you need to make sure that you click on the object if you click on the page you know the properties are a little bit different because those are specific to that page go to the browser a little bit different so and you, you can also see class here class is browser class name is page class name is win edit and you can also you know you know identify that based on the very first word here browser page and uh, win edit those are the class names so within that object which is a text box on the chase.com website you have quite a bit of information here you have a um, html tag which is input html id that's the id of that particular uh, you know um, you know field or i mean to say the object uh let me scroll down a little bit uh, that's a name that's what you see user underscore name and in uh, most of the times you would you see the inner text to include that name as well and then placeholder uh, user ID these are more specific to the HTML uh, code and tags so you know getting more familiar familiar with HTML will definitely help so that's what it is about the Anyway, that's how you grab the properties and review. Now, now that we grabbed, you know, the object properties, you know, what is that we can do? Uh, we have we have a couple more options here. You know, three more buttons. You know what? Before I dive into that, let me talk about native and identification. So you have an object, and let's first talk about properties. Under properties, you have native and identification. Under operations, you have native and test objects. So under properties, uh, let me first talk about identification properties here. So the UFT is identifying this object using these properties based on the class. So this object, if you see it's a child object, it started with a browser, then you have a page inside it, so by the time it sees the browser it knows that it's a web application then it's a page and then it says web edit so by the time it gets here it knows that the object belongs to a web application that is the key web web it's a web application it knows that and then it's an edit that means it knows that the user uh, it's a type of an object where user would key in something right so once it knows all that the UFT will automatically try to grab all this information so all these properties are you know pretty much that it knows that it needs to get once it knows the class name it knows that it needs to get absolute x y the class name you know this lowercase class and default value whether it is disabled or not height html id html tag so any web edit you go to you would have all these properties listed now whether they have values or not that's a totally different thing because this value is actually coming from the website some people might provide certain information some people may not so so the values depend on the website but for this type of pro so this class of object EFT will always try to uh, find collect the information of these properties 
So these are the properties that help UFT identify an object once it is once it saves information. The native native is a little bit different. Native is uh, so it is the actual uh, object properties that are used or defined by the person who designs the application. Let's say, for example, you're trying to identify the object properties, say, on a Windows application like, um, you know, this. So we have seen ActiveX control. We have seen, um, you know, the buttons and text boxes, right? So when you, uh, if I do this and, uh, you know what, let me do this. Okay, let us go back and you know use this to identify you know pull the properties of this text box. So here we have the properties. So you know the the identification properties are the properties used by UFT to identify the object. So natively, these are the properties that UFT thinks that it should collect. The native properties are the actual properties of you know that particular uh, uh, object type or class of object. So primarily native is, say for example, if you're working with an ActiveX uh, control uh, object. ActiveX control object was originally developed by Microsoft. So however Microsoft identifies those objects, you know, those are the object properties. But whereas this is the actual properties that UFT needs to identify the object, you know, that's the, that's the difference. And uh, operations are, you know, the kind of operations that you can perform on that particular Objects. You know, say for example, you can uh, click on the button. It makes sense, but you know, you can clicking on a text box. It really doesn't make any sense because even if you click, there's really nothing it does. I mean, it might have that. You know, there is here. It says click, but really that doesn't does not make any sense. Meaning, you know, it, there's no expected output out of clicking a text box. But whereas you can click a button. If it's enabled, it is supposed to do something. It may not do anything, but it is supposed to do something. So the, those are the kind of things that you have to know. Uh, so for a drop, for example, drop down. When you click the drop down, it's supposed to pull the drop down list so that you can pick one. So depending, I mean, you, it's very natural. I mean, you you might have already you know seen this drop downs text boxes button. It's a natural expectation that you click a link. It's supposed to display something. You click a button. It's supposed to do something. So that something could be going to the next screen or going, you know, displaying a message on the screen. Now, whatever that might be, but you could do certain operation on the uh, on that particular object. So that's what it is. So once we have this object in here, you could do a few things. Number one, you could click on this to highlight that within the application. You could use the second or the third one, which is add objects to repository. So if I do that, it adds this object to the repository, you know, within, within whatever repository, whatever action that you have active, it goes into that repository. So let's say I did already clicked on it. Let us go to object repository and look at here what we have. We have Chase Bank, credit cards, Chase Bank, credit cards, and username. Right. Of course, I mean, this test object is not relevant to our application, but the point here is that you can add objects using your object spy. You know, you, you collect, but you know, unfortunately, it's one object at any given point of time. You cannot add multiple uh, because it's not, uh, but you know, adding multiple objects is, uh, uh, is it is done using object repository itself with the plus icon, that's the icon. But you know, using object spy, you can only add one. Now, there is another thing called, uh, sorry, there's a, there's a last uh, button here called copy the identification properties to the clipboard. Now it says identification properties. Say for example, you accidentally select a native and it's not no, no, this button. It's not highlighted. It's almost. It looks like it's it's grayed out. But if I select identification, now it's enabled. When I click that, what happens is it will copy all these properties into your clipboard. So what do you do after copying into clipboard? You know, let us open a notepad 
and paste everything in there so these are the properties that it let me do remove wrap okay these are the properties of the that particular object which is a web element uh, maybe this is not making much sense let me do this let me go back here do um, this and click on the text box copy it put it here okay so class web query it's nothing but the same thing you know all these properties will show up here and if you look at it you know it's a it's a double quotes the property name a colon equal to sign and the value of the property and it's uh, pretty much that's a syntax for every line in this file you have the property it's it's almost like a equal to 10 a is a variable 10 is a value you're using equal to sign to as an assignment operator but here it's a colon and equal to and then if you see it's a comma for every object you have a comma So knowing this is actually uh, that you could, you know, grab information like this and, uh, you know, put it in a uh, notepad is huge because when you do uh, descriptive programming and when you try to, you know, uh, work with objects that UFT does not recognize or, you know, if you're working with, you know, anyway, you know, in descriptive programming, you don't, you directly write the descriptions to work with the web page, right? So when you do that, this comes real handy because, all you have to do is open this up, point it to the object that you want to work with, look at the properties, and just grab the property that you want to you know, use to identify the object on that page, and you're done. You directly work with that object now. But you, know, the, you need to grab enough properties so that you can identify the object at the runtime. So that's the key. So, yeah, so I believe that was the last uh, thing that I want to talk about, uh, object spy. Well, that's it. So just to quick a recap. Um, so Object Spy is a tool within UFT that is used to uh, view the properties of an object, you know, any object on a web page uh, or any object on a Windows based application. I mean, you know, even if you're working with SAP applications or anything, you can do that. But uh, however, you need to have appropriate add in for that. And if you, you know, work with a .NET Windows-based application, you might want to use the .NET Windows Spy. You know, there is another thing here. Under Tools, you have .NET Windows Form Spy. It's a little bit different, but it's the same concept. You use this, and but you know, this is not, uh, you know, uh, a actual .NET uh, Windows Form. .NET Windows Form is a little bit different. These are uh, regular. Uh, let me move this around. This is just a standard Windows form, not a .NET uh, form. So if it's a .NET form, then you need to use the .NET Spy to uh, read the properties of the, uh, you know, pro I mean to say the, to read the properties of the object. So, you know, that's it about uh, the Object Spy. And uh, I hope um, that helped you in learning about the Object Spy and you might want to play around with it I would highly encourage you to you know work with the application that you already know I mean even if it is a sample flight reservation application you know you might as well start with it you know it, it always helps to work with a known application before jumping into something you don't know it helps because for example you know just as a as a proof you are you have worked with this application through all these videos and you now identify or recognize this when I say uh, agent name colon password colon you saw all that with an object repository so you, you, the names are registered with you so when you try to study those objects using object spy it kind of connects and then you know, try to explore web applications and you pick any website you could go to americanexpress.com or you know wellsfargo.com try to explore take a look at it and that would definitely you know you know give you a good insight into the object spy well uh, i want to wind this up in less than 10 minutes but i think it took about 15 minutes that's fine okay uh, thank you very much for watching this video and i will see you in the next